Good morning, true crime friends. How y'all doing? Look, 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 look. Today, hang on, hang on, hang on. We need to just get right into it. The treehouse murder case. <sighs> that circus down there in Key West continues to circus on. Last night, this jury of eight men and four women hung, hanged, hung, hungeth. I don't know. They could not reach a decision. I, 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 Okay, okay. I have thoughts. I have feelings. Here they are. <clears throat> In no particular order. First of all, what? What? What is what is happening in Key West? Is everybody in Key West high on crack? But also, here's the thing that I learned yesterday while watching Court TV, which was very educational. I'm just going to sit here and not mention these lovely flowers. A friend sent me flowers, and I'm so happy. And I was like, oh, I want to put them on my desk. Anyway, um... The people that are on the jury are drawn from that county. Now, does that county just include the island of Key West? It's an island, right? It's a key? That's an island? I don't know. Anyway, um, the people are drawn from that county. I'm not sure if that county is just Key West or if it's like Key West and the surrounding areas. Because I personally get the feeling that Key West has its own culture, which includes some very, very rich people and a big gaggle of just like roaming, marauding, unhoused people who are um, narcotics enthusiasts and uh, some of them are in sales and marketing of it. And a bunch of people whose health is not that good because here's the thing. Um... If you've been watching this case, Anathea, Anathea Clay, I think her name is, has come up a couple of times in this case. Now, I have not mentioned her because I thought she was a peripheral person, person, but apparently Anathea, whose name is also Alice, I think, something like that, um, is the one who was said to have set up this crime. Anathea was mad at Paula Bellamont was it a drug rivalry? There was a couple of old ladies who looked like leathered seasoned bags who were fighting over something. Were they both unhoused? Anathea was somebody's girlfriend. I don't remember whose girlfriend she was. But Anathea was real, real mad at Paula Bellamy. I was like, you should go rob her and take her crack and take her money. Okay. Only thing is, when um, it all came down to it, the police really did not interview Anathea. Okay, and so then when they interviewed the victim, Paula Belmont, she's like, she's a whore, she's a whore. I was like, oh, she has unkind words and feelings. And they were like, are you saying she ran a prostitution ring? She's like, no, I'm just saying she was just like dropping it low and spreading it wide all over the island. Oh, this is what this woman said in a deposition under oath. And because she raised her hand and promised to tell the truth, that means she believed that mess from the bottom of her heart. Okay. There's a saying um, on, what TV show was it on? I, Succession, where they talked about no real people involved. That means when like regular citizens, taxpayers, me and you, when something happens to us, uh, well, truthfully, and on Succession, I think they only considered super rich people real people because if you was like a regular people, they were like, oh, don't worry about it. No real people were involved. But in this particular case, I wonder... If the good citizens down there at Key West are looking at this entire mess and they're like, oh, it was just a bunch of unhoused and narcotics enthusiasts. So no real people were involved. So they don't really care that much. I don't, I don't. This case is crazy. It's really, really good for my channel. And it is good comedy, if you ask me, if you want to know the truth. But um, these are real people and they deserve justice. Also, uh, how many of these people are going to be alive when it's time for the retrial? Oh, because yes, they're going to try it again. The, the district attorney down there in Key West is so misguided that there is an excellent chance that they are going to try this again. Why? Why? District Attorney, Mr. District Attorney, Mrs. District Attorney, um, y'all got y'all behinds beat. This man is formerly homeless with no legal education, and he just spanked y'all right there in the courtroom on the court TV for God and all the world to see. Y'all got out here and embarrassed yourselves. That criminal, criminal investigation that you ran was a shame before the Lord. Okay, fine, fine, fine. You thought you was just going to railroad some of these unhoused people and throw them in jail and say they were guilty of murder and then when you didn't have the goods. Y'all said to Ty, Ty, you could walk on this. You could go free, no problem. 
just confessed that you did it. He's like, I did not do it. And so I will not say yes. And so he took this all the way to court. And honestly, if you ask me, the state got beat because the state could not convince 12 ordinary ordinary citizens that a narcotics, an unhoused narcotics enthusiast did the crime. And so he should do the crime, do the time or whatever. Everything about this case is crazy. But please, don't get me wrong. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love everything about it. So this is the way the day broke down. The jury is deliberating, deliberating. They get in. They get the jury instructions around 10 o'clock. They start deliberating. And then a few hours in, one of the jurors was like, hello, um, excuse me, your honor. I, I, I have a note. I, I have a question. So they were like, okay. The judge pulls out the note and reads it right there on the court TV. And he says, um, oh, we have a juror who needs to take medication. Why is this a note? Why, why did y'all make me think there was a verdict? Why did I stop my lunch hour and come in here and lean in close and get all perch to hear that one of the jurors needs medication? Let that man go get his Tylenol and keep on with his day. Or also, what was the medication he needed? What was such a medical emergency that he needed it right now and it could not wait? Heartburn medication? Blood pressure medication? Hemorrhoid cream. I don't, I'm not sure what was happening back there in the jury room, but one of the jurors was like, I need my medication and I need it right now. And so normally I would think they would go, okay, we're just going to take this as a break. You go get your medication and you come back. It's Key West. How far away could his car be parked? A block, half a block, right outside the courtroom doors? Unclear. So all the lawyers, all the everybody piled back in and they, the brain trust got together. How are we going to accomplish this? Because apparently the jury needs to stay sequestered and always together during their deliberations. Nobody can be out of the room. So the whole jury is going to go to this man's car or this lady's car? I don't understand. So the judge is like, okay, there are a couple different options. You could just send the sheriff out to go get the medication out of your car. So let me get this straight. Just because my hemorrhoids are flaring up, I'm going to send a sheriff's deputy to go to my car and just root around and search for whatever it is unaccompanied by me. No, you're not. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. And who's to say that this juror is not also a narcotics enthusiast? I don't know. Just because he's a citizen and hasn't been caught for anything. And maybe they have legal weed down there in, in Key West or whatever. Look like everything else is legal the way these people is running around. But I was like, okay, Your Honor, that's... Mm -mm. The, the juror was like, yeah, that's going to be a no for me, dog. So ultimately, after much thought and deliberation, the decision was made to have a sheriff escort this person to their car to get the medication and come back. But the, the judge was like, nobody can know, it cannot become public which juror needed medication. Okay, but everybody sitting in court can is gonna see them get up and walk out to the, okay. So the, the judge called the entire jury back into the jury room and they were instructed to sit there quietly while one of the mystery jurors went to his car and got medication. Were they instructed to close their eyes? Okay, who, oh, somebody go get your medication. What? So the person goes and gets their medication. And I'm watching it in real time. I was like, oh, well, maybe he parked 12 blocks away. Literally two minutes later. Okay, he's back. You can go deliberate now. What? What is wrong? I don't, I don't. Okay, fine, 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 fine. So um, they go back to deliberating. And then five hours in, another note comes out. Your Honor, um, we are we are deadlocked. So what do we do now? We can't agree. Really? Yeah. A lot of people said this was going to be a hung jury. Maybe I'm just seeing it from my point of view. I was like, hung? Huh? Why wouldn't they just acquit him? Honestly, like they didn't have all the goods. Yeah, they had some of the information, but nobody in this story was reliable. He was so high, he does not know what happened that day. His defense could be like, oh, mm -hmm. did you kill him? I don't know. Were you there? I don't know. Why don't you know, sir? I was super, super high because it was fantasy fest or fright fest or some kind of fest. I don't every. OK, anyway. So um, the judge was like, OK, so I'm going to read the Allen charge unless somebody, you know, disagrees that that's what I should do. Ty, who apparently does not watch court TV and is not a true crime fan, is like, well, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm going to need to phone a friend. So you can just, when you're, 
okay so he's like hey you see him on the phone yeah hey um they can't make a decision and the judge wants to get this dude named Allen in here and charge him to, oh wait well hmm that's how it that's standard okay I didn't all right all right cool 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 okay thanks bye your honor I phoned my friend and he said that's okay we can do that okay I could have recited the Allen charge on my own like Ty, you never watch court TV? Did you watch an episode of Law and Order? Nothing? Nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, great. So they get the jury back in and they're like, hey, yo mama Lukes, you can't come to a decision. And it's funny because the Allen charge starts off. I know you have worked very hard. Did they? Did they? Anyway, and so he's like, um, go back and talk to each other civilly and see if you can work it out. And if you can't work it out, then come back and I'll just say it's a mistrial and whatever. Now, me personally, I would have been like, no, I want to see this through to the end. Although, if there are people who were not willing to come to my side and it's getting late in the evening, I told you I had a 6.30 deadline. These people went to like 7. No way in the world I would have stayed that late. I would have been like, Miss Trial, Miss Trial, Miss Trial. Um, it's TV shows I need to watch. My dogs get fed at 7 o'clock. I know this island is only three seconds big, but I have things to do. How late is the CVS open? Um, is there a sale at Target? Do they still have the blue light special down there at Kmart? I might need to go investigate that. Walmart is busy rolling back prices. I need to go over there and get some of them rollbacks. Nope, I'm getting out of here. I'm tired of y'all. I'm sick of this judge. I'm sick of the prosecutor. I'm sick of the defense. I'm sick of all these crackheads rolling up in here. Talk about this and that and the other thing. This one is cussing. That one's clearly not going to survive to a next trial. Let me go. So... The judge was like, okay, you can't make a decision. The case is mistried. But not before the defense attorney stands up. I guess that happened. And they said, thank you, Jerry. Bye. It's so lovely to see you. You done screwed this whole thing up. That judge was like, I have the world's biggest etc. and headache. And now we got to do this mess again. Please, baby Jesus, let Ty Tucker hire a lawyer. Because Ty, your whole point was that you wanted eyes on this case and eyes are on this case. If you hire a real lawyer, this could be efficient and just go right along. It's not like you don't have the money. Just hire somebody and stop wasting our time. It's still going to be entertaining. We still going to watch. We just need you to stop screwing around. Also, wasn't there... Maybe this is to me. And maybe I'm telling a little bit too much about my personal life. But wasn't there years ago, like back in the 80s, possibly the 90s, I guess it would have to be the 90s because I would have been a child in the 80s. Wasn't there an adult uh, film called The Hung Juror? Just me? Y'all ain't see that? I feel like maybe I was always a true crime fan and that's where I feel like there was a movie called The Hung Juror. Anyway. Another story for another day. The defense, the prosecuting attorney gets up and is like, Your Honor, there's another issue that has come about. And that is that I don't know how my cell phone number got out there. Then he looks at Ty real hard. Like, and Ty's like, I didn't do nothing. What you and the, the, the attorney's like, I didn't say he did. But all I'm saying is that this Mama Luke has been all up on the YouTubes and all over everywhere calling us idiots and saying we had our head up our butts and blah, blah, blah. And now my cell phone number has gotten um, out there in the public and I'm getting death threats. What? Y'all. I love a true crime case as, not, as much as the next true crime fan, but you can't be threatening to unalive people. That is terrible manners. Y'all mamas didn't raise you right. That's all I'm saying. If you were out here like, okay, um, I don't like what this guy said. Boop, 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 boop. Hello, sir. I am now threatening to unalive you. No, no, we don't do that. No, bad true crime fan, bad. Bad. So um, the, he's like, now I have to change my phone number. My family is not safe. And Ty is like, it was not me. It was not me. And the judge was like, nobody said it was you. And the prosecutor was like, I'm saying it was him. Look like it was him to me. But also, sir, um, a lot of us have eyes and we've watched you in court. Now, I don't think people should be threatening your life. I think that is highly inappropriate. But for people to think poorly of you, yeah, that, that tracks. I don't even know you like that. And I think poorly of you because why ain't y'all just drop this case? Y'all just need to drop this case. Let this man go be annoying someplace else because you know, no matter what happens now, he's going to be annoying. No question about it. He's going to be annoying no matter where he goes. Let him go back and be annoying in the Pacific Northwest. If he's a criminal, he's going to get into some more crime. Oh, he's going to keep running his mouth. He going to say something reckless. What are the chances that this dude ends up dead or back in jail? They're X 
excellent. They're really, really good. You don't have to be the one to put him there. He's going to put himself there. So don't worry about it because this Mama Luke is annoying. Oh, my God, is he annoying. Anyway, so he's just like, I will stop calling the prosecutor terrible names on the Internet. You happy now? The judge is like, okay. Where is that Excedrin? I might need some actual liquor because these Mama Lukes are a bunch of idiots. Hang on, you know I don't talk with throat dry. Hang on, hang on. So, the trial has officially hung. Unlike that juror from the movie, or maybe exactly like that juror from the movie. I don't know. I don't even remember what was in the movie. I just remember the movie title. Anyway, so... Ty, of course, is all up on the internet and everybody who will have him. Oh, he's giving interviews now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's given plenty of interviews with Court TV and with the uncivil lawyer and every place he could get interviewed. He's getting interviewed. I'm ready for the next case. Ty, shut up. The other thing that he's saying is like, y'all need to quit talking about me. Ty, sir, you have made being talked about your whole entire life personality what you gonna do after this you're gonna have nothing but free time on your hands possibly in jail maybe free out here in these streets please don't come to north jersey because it's we not mm -mm, we not about that life maybe like go up to he seems like one of those one of those people who don't want any laws or they don't want laws to apply to them or whatever he would do good up there in um where is it where it's cold and people go skiing um maine and like up there uh, was uh, not wisconsin new hampshire child you know it's all the same Anything north of Bergen County might as well be Canada, and anything south of Jersey City is basically Florida. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not good with geography. I went to public school. Anyway, in other true crime, briefly, because you know it's the hour is late and I have things to do. Jennifer Crumley, that is the mother of um the school unaliver, Ethan Crumley. I told y'all yesterday that when Jennifer was in prison, while she was in jail, waiting for this trial to come up, she made friends with Megan Amirowitz. Megan Amirowitz is the young girl, she's like 18, 19 years old, who threw lie, the, the drain cleaner lie on her father, who was drunk, laying on the bed, laying on the couch in the living room. Her father relieved himself. And so lie mixed with water causes burns. And, the, and then he laid there drunk for four hours in the caustic mixture and he had fourth degree burns burns all the way down to the muscle and to the bone and so she he um ultimately died from his injuries and she was in in prison in jail with jennifer crumbly they got to be like this okay well megan showed up in court yesterday to support her friend jennifer okay and the court, somebody in the courtroom was like, uh, 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 this half I can't be here. And she's like, I'm just here to support my friend. And so she was ejected from the courtroom. And I was like, oh, okay. Now we got a little action going. Apparently the prosecution has called Megan to testify on the state's behalf. What did Jennifer say while she was in jail that Megan needs to testify to? That is very curious to me. Here's the other thing that's very curious about this case. Jennifer Crumley's attorneys apparently did not see the pictures of the crime scene. So when they were shown in court yesterday, uh, the defense attorney started crying a lot to the point that she could not go on. Ma'am, that's going to prejudice the jury. I'm just call me crazy. I'm no lawyer. You know, I'm not a lawyer, but if you just sit there and weep uncontrollably in court, that's not going to go good for your client. It's just not. And so they call for a break. And then the state was like, your honor, you said no emotional outburst. You see this happen over here. She's crying real hard and I'm not going to stand for it. And blah, blah, blah. It was fireworks in the courtroom. I was like, Oh, say more, say more. Meanwhile, the defense attorney was like, I am only a human being. And these pictures are terrible. I did not expect to see victims ma'am do you normally do civil law you didn't realize there was going to be victims in a case where there are four unalive people who are under the age of eight what you didn't 
Okay. So she was just like, I just checked in my mirror. My makeup is not running. It is fully intact. And in my mind, she was going to launch into a commercial for Thrive Cosmetics. And I was just like, okay, she's going to tell us about how long and luscious her lashes are. And it's waterproof and it's not running down her first. Even though when you go to wash it off, all you need is soap and water. Oh, I love Thrive Mascara. Not a commercial, just facts. Anyway, so there was some fireworks back and forth in the court. And finally, the court was like, we are all human everybody calm down. It's gonna be okay. And so that course case continues today. But honestly, I can't be looking at pictures of dead. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So I just watched the highlights of that case and summarize. I imagine there's going to be enough. Oh, I can't say that word. There's going to be enough fornication in that case. that There's going to be plenty for me to talk about without having to see every little bit in detail. I'm good with a summary. So I will get the summary and I will bring it to you. But if you're cool with seeing all those young victims have that. It. You can have that one, child. It's not for me. Anyway, oh, child, this video was long. And I still need to get to the shop right. I'm now out of Cornish Game Hens because yesterday I roasted me a hen. Oh, it was delicious at lunchtime. Maybe I'll get some variety. I don't know what I'm going to make this week or this weekend. But because you know I meal prep. I meal prep for my dogs. I meal prep for my family. I got to drive that boy back to school. Oh, it's going to be a busy weekend. What y'all doing? What you doing this weekend? You know, my clothing charity fits. It used to be called Threads. Now it's called Fits. Where we give, um, we set up a whole beautiful boutique. It almost looks like a thrift store, but like a very high-end thrift store because we get a lot of donations from movie sets and stuff. We donate clothes to unhoused LGBTQIA youth. And so this week, and then I'm the seamstress. So the kids come in with their clothes that are too big and they're too small, whatever that they got from the boutique. Everything is free. They get snacks, they get music, they get to hang out with other teenagers. And then I hem up the pants and I make the jackets fit and I do the thing. It's exhausting, but I love it. And um, we're getting, we're gearing up for prom season again. So um, we're getting everything together for Pride Prom, which will take place in May this year. So yay for Pride Prom. Anyway, so you know I got things to do. I need to stretch. I need to rest. I need to get myself together for the long marathon weekend of sewing for kids and driving my son back to college and getting on with the rest of my happy life. Okay, you get on with the rest of your happy day and I will see you later. Bye.